Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com, and we continue our Dynamics AX to Dynamics 365 Upgrade Journeys podcast series with uh, episode two, and I am joined once again by uh, Peter Jekyll of Turn On Dynamics. Peter, welcome to the podcast. Welcome back to episode two. Jason, thanks for having me back a second time, even though the uh, cease and desist letters uh, got sent out. Well, you know, they get lost in the bureaucracy, and what, what can you do? The, uh, the topic for today is going to be about the employment model decisions that companies are making when they move from Dynamics AX to Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. It's uh, a great topic and probably a good one to really kick this series off with after our little sort of intro review from, from episode one. And we should probably start by, by with some definitions. So when a company is looking to move from AX to finance and operations, they have really, in, in theory at least, three different options, right? Cloud, on-premises, and hybrid uh, deployment models to, to at least think about. Uh, can we maybe start, or can I maybe ask you to start by uh, giving us some of the, the working definitions that you use when you're talking with your, with your clients? Yeah, sure. So this is, you know, the first interesting thing is when, um, you know, how this upgrade is so much different from every other upgrade I've ever seen in an ERP system is, you know, the upgrade questions are normally, you know, when do we do it, how much is it going to cost, and, you know, who's going to do it for me, right? Um, the thing that I noticed right off in starting to talk to folks, um, either existing customers or, you know, folks who we're talking to, um, you know, as far as picking up as customers, is this discussion around, you know, where, how, how are we going to deploy this new version of the software, right? Are we going to go completely into Microsoft's cloud, right? Where uh, everything is managed by Microsoft and, you know, we're basically accessing our ERP system through a browser, right? Um, and what we're doing is we're paying that monthly per user fee, um, you know, Microsoft manages everything, you know, all, you, you no longer have that need typically for that big IT department, Microsoft becomes the IT department, on and on and on. So the other option obviously is this, uh, on premise, you keep, you know, the software in-house because certain folks, I think you're always going to have some, you know, reason that you don't trust going to the cloud or you can't go to the cloud, you know, there are technical reasons why that you know, might not be something that you want to do. So it's, you know, it's the same as before, new software, the software is upgraded, but you're still running it on your servers, you know, on your equipment, your IT department in-house. And then there is this, uh, the hybrid model, which interestingly enough, I have just found out there is also terminology calling it not only a hybrid model, but a cloud and edge deployment. So that is a new term that I was unfamiliar with. Well, you had to figure so, that was coming with Microsoft's uh, other other use of those terms. Right. So you have the, um, you know, what a lot of people call hybrid, which is a combination of, you know, you use uh, the software in the cloud that Microsoft is running for you, um, but you also need components uh you know, running locally in your own shop. So a lot of, you know, discussion between what makes most sense to us. And like I said, that is a, you know, that's a, um, that was one of the questions that you typically on the upgrades you didn't find. And here, uh, not only did you find that on every single case for everybody that we spoke to, but there are big proposals, big discussions, and, you need, and everybody, you know, went through this, um, you know, major analysis of which direction functionally cost, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is the best way to go. So big, uh, you know, big discussions um, uh, before making a decision. Okay, so you're sort of you're laying out those options. Your how, companies are are being perhaps a little introspective, thinking about what they. What they think they can they can take on, and they're ready to perhaps do a really um, thorough analysis and make sure they've explored the options and made the best choice for themselves. But you say that the uh, those decisions, those debates, are not always as long lasting or uh, as as uh, as deep as they might be. Yeah, it's, what's interesting is that um, you know when you first start talking to people, everybody kind of has that. Um, 
preconceived uh, notion of what they should do, right? Uh, and often it varies between individuals within an organization. You know, there are people that, yeah, we got, we have to go to the cloud. That's the future. We should go to the cloud. And then there is the, uh, no, you know, we need, uh, we need to control our own data security, this, that, and the other thing. So you have all these various discussions that go on and as far as the best approach. And so a lot, uh, as I said, almost in every single case, we get into this analysis of cost, you know, features function, you know, all these different discussions. And then one of the interesting things we found out very quickly is that um, if you, you know, if you do a simple exercise by Googling, um, you know, uh, Dynamics 365 for finance and operations, cloud versus on-premise, right? Um, Microsoft themselves publishes a very detailed list of things that are available for Dynamics 365 for finance and operations in the cloud versus not available on premises. So what you have is you've got this long list of stuff and you know in the cloud column, it's all yes, 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 yes. And in the on-premise, it's yes, no, yes, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. And so that very quickly, you know, opens people's eyes as far of as far as which direction not only do they want to go in, but which direction can they go in, right? And there's some real interesting, you know, major things, right? Major things that are important between the two. So a major consideration is, do you have, you know, the type of connection to the internet that allows you to take your ERP system and put it, you know, put it in the cloud? That's not an automatic yes for everybody, you know, depending on their geography, right? Uh, country. Um, on, on the other hand, is there are, you know, minor uh, decisions, right? And so I always thought it was real funny because we had, uh, we were going through this analysis and these, these folks, uh, the accounting department was heavily involved in the pluses and minuses, you know, cost benefit analysis, ROI, you know, of having Microsoft do the, uh, you know, having all your IT functionality shift to the cloud versus having, to buy new hardware, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it got to be a really detailed analysis. And at the time we found out that um, in the, you know, for your uh, accounting department, which took a lot of reports inside of AX currently. And what they do is when they do some reporting, they export them to Excel and then, you know, do their magic in Excel. Well, at the time, I'm not sure if it's still a case, but you could not export to Excel. You could only export to PDF. Now, th that seems like a completely minor thing to you and I, right? But the accounting the accounting department went up and you know they they all threatened a, a work shutdown and walk out, right? If they couldn't get that functionality, and so you have these very uh, you know significant technical reasons, cost reasons, um, you know business reasons for one or the other. But then sometimes it's it's interesting that, you know, the most minor functional reason is, you know, just a killer within an organization. And the thing that I, you know, the thing that I, I wonder when I, you know, when I look down at the, uh, the evolving list of things that are available uh, in the cloud and on-premises, um, when you get this long list of no's for, you know, what you can do on-premise with the D365 is you wonder, you know, are these really that technically difficult to deliver? Or is this like a subtle way to, you know, move everybody to the cloud? And it's, um, you know, it's definitely something that makes you wonder. Right. I, I mean, one, one thing I imagine, and you can tell me more of your experience, is that at this point, um, unless you're dealing with someone who's, you know, a new hire kind of just out of, just out of college or something like that, most people have seen more than one ERP uh, system in their lives and have probably been a part of at least one other ERP implementation or near one before the the one that they're having this conversation with you about now. And um, I, I think perhaps they, they have learned n not to take lightly some of those no's um, that, uh, that show up on those checklists. And, uh, you know, some of the unknown, uh, unknown problems those could, those could, cause in the future and that the conservative choice is to stay away, just stay away from them um, just for just for the sake of not knowing uh, with any certainty what what they may bring 
Is that uh, yeah. is that the case? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, yeah. why start with a bunch of no's, right? Yeah, yeah. If, I, if it's you know, if it's a you know, if it's a you know, coin flip kind of thing, why even why even look at the one side? But but I think the thing the thing that's interesting is that um, there are definitely folks where the move from their on premise to the cloud, it's not something they're excited about. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's not something that, oh, gee, now we finally get to move to the cloud. Let's, uh, you know, let's pack everything up and finally we're going to be there. Because there is, um, you know, there are a lot of ease of use things, you know, that you're promised by the cloud, but it also introduces a lot of difficulties, right? And so it's, um, you know, it's all not wonderful marketing material and this is the way we should go. And you really, you really have, uh, you know, a lot of different folks with different opinions on this. And some folks, I think there's going to be a huge, I think there's going to be a huge number of folks that are never going to um, uh, go to the cloud. And the driver of, you know, we're only going to support a certain version for a certain amount of time. You know, my guess is that there's going to be an install base that has enough mass that those, you know, support dates going to be pushed out forever. And at some point that on-premise product is going to have to be, um, you know, it's just going to have to catch up and be as robust as whatever they offer in the cloud. Yeah, this sounds, I mean, it sounds so, somewhat familiar to me to um, to what's happened with CRM over the last uh, maybe, what, three, four, five years even, um, as CRM online sort of evolved and turned into 365 and, uh, kept moving forward. I mean, it, it seemed to fall into a cadence where, you know, an acceptable amount of on uh, of things were being left off, sort of officially left off of the on-prem offering while um, while the the cloud version just continued to move forward with the latest innovations and things may or may not be added. And I think Microsoft started making a statement. So just started offering guidance, I guess you'd say, about this will this will get there eventually, this will never be there. And companies just had to, you know, take that for what it was worth. Um, and it's sort of, sort of mirror, sounds like it's sort of mirroring that to some extent. Yeah. And I think both you and I have been, you know, have worked in this uh, industry in general and with Microsoft specifically long enough that guidance today is exactly that the guidance today. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's even shorter. T- I mean, with, with cloud, it's, it's, it's a, it's a shorter time frame than it used to be. Um, you used to get a t- well, at least two year roadmap. You just don't get that now. It just it's just gone. Yeah, uh, because I think the pressure is there. There's a tremendous amount of pressure to sign up people into the cloud because that is their business model. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, so anything and everything that you know speeds up that promise, I would imagine, is a tremendous internal uh, priority. All right. Uh, the- I guess the uh, the third element. Uh, well, so <laughs> the other thing that comes to my mind, I'll just mention it here because I know it's really not not our focus, and we have a whole another uh, whole another episode uh, just about price. But when you're having these, or, or maybe you could talk about sort of the stage at which you're having these conversations, and has has cost entered into it yet? So I'm I'm guessing an AX a company using AX has a handle on what it's been costing them uh, to run AX. They know when they last bought hardware. They know what their IT you know, costs are associated with uh, with this particular solution, hopefully, versus um, over overall, and and so on and so forth. Are they are they thinking about cost at the point at which they're also thinking about what do I get cloud versus what do I get on prem, and what do I uh, are they also thinking what do I pay on 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 prem versus what do I pay uh, in the cloud, or is that is that further down the line? Well, there's um, I'm going to tease a little bit on our uh, cost blog because uh, you know our our cost uh, uh, podcast because I think it's um, I, I think it's it, it, it's critical. The uh, the two things that I found on the cost side is if you are thinking about an on premise, um, you know, if you're thinking of staying on premise, the cost of the hardware I think is shocking to most people. Um, a combination of the number, you know, the, the, the amount of the equipment and the capabilities of equipment and the cost of that equipment. And it reminded me of, um, you know, it reminded me of an old uh, term uh, with working with Microsoft when, um, when you would have an update to a program and you needed bigger, badder 
you know, hardware to run it, they would call, they would say that the, the upgraded version requires a hardware refresh. And I always thought that was really funny because, you know, hardware refresh is one of those great marketing terms means, yeah, I got to go out and buy a bigger a laptop. Right. Um, but in these cases, the cost, the, the cost of the hardware to run this on premise because to some extent, you know, you're recreating this uh, huge infrastructure that Microsoft has, you know, put together in their data centers, right. and you're recreating this yourself in your own company. I think that's been shocking to companies. And then the other big shock is the actual, um, you know, you have the obvious comparison of, you know, you buy the licensing to be on premise versus, you know, you pay on a monthly basis per user, what I call the gym membership, right? Uh, the, you know, that comparison, that analysis comparison is pretty straightforward. I think the thing that has really shocked folks on the uh, cost side that we'll get into is the actual cost of the upgrades. Yeah, and we and we touched on that in uh, in our in our intro episode, too. But, yeah, certainly a big a big one for people to uh, to consider. Uh, well, I think the other one is what technical complexity. So, um You've been seeing, uh, you told me, a shift in in the conversation compared to AX, where line of business owners uh, versus IT owner, or I guess maybe not owner stakeholders, I guess you, you'd call them perhaps representatives, um, are kind of changing the way they look at each other's roles or, or responsibilities when they're thinking about moving to to finance and operations. And that, that surprised me because assuming, <laughs> assuming that I kind of put that right, because you'd think, oh, cloud, uh, less of the sort of dirtiest parts of the IT responsibility are now gone. It's more, um, you know, architecture, high level, higher level architecture planning, um, freed up to, to worry about some of those things that, that they didn't, that uh, it, with a, a cleaner plate than before. Not the case? Yeah. So uh, I have a uh, I have a maxim uh, in the ERP world which says that uh, uh, easy to do is easy to say, right? And so you know one of the you know and and stepping back a second off of that comment on you know what you were talking about well, for the business versus the IT folks and their involvement uh, in ERP projects, one of the things that I found in my career is that when I started my career, all of these ERP projects were run by the business and the IT department supported the business in their implementations, right? And the strategic needs that the business needed were supported by the IT department. So a business was coming in saying, we, we need a better way to, to track our, to do our accounting, to track our operations, to uh, you know, follow the money around our organization in and out. Um, here's a, here's a solution that'll do that for us. Figure out a way to, uh, to, to, to make this run inside of our company. And, um, no, it's even different. It's, it's even, it's even more, uh, it's either, you know, we've run, we're, we're sick of QuickBooks. We can't run it anymore. We have to buy great planes. Uh, we're buying great planes, figure out how to run it mm -hmm. so that we can use it. Effectively, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, and, and then that next iteration of mid-market to, you know, whatever, you know, product you uh, graduated, graduated to after that mid-market uh, selection. Now, unless you buy QuickBooks, there's nothing you can run that doesn't require a heavy lift from an IT department, right? And it's gotten, it's gotten so, uh, it's gotten so complex that often the IT departments completely run these projects, it is uh, it is a fascinating you know shift in how these things are run and controlled, and one of the promises of you know going to the cloud is well what the heck you know Microsoft just turns this stuff on for you, even if you are the most simple you know twenty user introductory uh, you uh, you know user for this uh, D three sixty five product. And they tell you, you know, you have this portal, lifecycle services that you go in that starts everything up and lets you run it. What we tell folks is when they're making this transition or they're starting up uh, with this product is instead of us, instead of us training somebody to use lifecycle services, just let us do it for you because it's not easy to use. It's complex. There's a lot of places you can go wrong. And by the way, 
you know, there's a lot of stuff that you're never going to have to use again after the startup. So why invest all this time and energy to get this system up and running when we can have somebody to save you a bunch of time? And that's just, you know, that's just on the simple getting your system up and running provision through Microsoft, you know, paying your money and then saying, you know, here's my name, rank and serial number, start of my system. So that's just, you know, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And that's not easy to do, right? Unless you, you know, work with it day after day and you understand how to use it. And, and would that still so, apply to a company that, let's say, they've, they've had AX in-house for, for years, they have people with with uh, sort of administrative skills there, can you not say to those people, oh, we'll just, we'll add, and maybe they've even used lifecycle services, right? I mean, it, it worked initially with AX 2012 R3, I think. Um, could we not, could you not say, well, you've already seen it, here's, you, you, you can you can drive it here too? That, th I believe that the folks that can do that are the exception, not the rule. I think that, um, I think that a lot of these tools, um, they're very useful. Um, and they do save a lot of time, but they're designed for and used by people that use them a lot and have a great deal of knowledge, right, with the tool. And, you know, for the vast majority of folks, uh, just stepping into it or starting up with it, like I said, it's, it's, it's a pretty heavy lift. Um, and, and that gets to, um, what does that do to the relationship uh, between the people who do, who are responsible for standing up a, the, you know, this big new ERP. Uh, what, what have you seen within the organizations that, that changes as a result of all this? I think what it is to a large extent is um, it's where larger organizations will have the, you know, will develop the resources internally to manage all this stuff that um, a lot of the folks kind of in the mid market that used to work uh, in AX, you know, with the data, you know, with uh, uh, integrations, with modifications and things of that nature, I think they're going to have to rely much more heavily on partner support um, because a lot of those things, because of the nature of running ERP software in the cloud, uh, everything is different and locked down much more. And so a lot of the things that used to be fairly straightforward and easy for folks to do on their, you know, medium size, small on premise uh, implementation, there's going to be a huge learning curve for them. And so there's going to be a lot more reliance on partners to get a lot of stuff done than, um, you know, than we currently would experience uh, with an implementation that's got that you know, one or two th or three good IT folks slash programmers that are taking care of a lot of stuff themselves in house. Is that uh, is that something that that you find is is good for companies to understand as they as they're just starting to get their uh, what, feet their feet wet um, with this kind of uh, an investigation and, and look looking into it, or is this something they have to kind of come to understand themselves as they really get deeper into the details um, that this point that you were just making about where responsibility is going to lie, who you're going to, uh, who you're going to rely on, um, for making all of these, these, uh, these things come to fruition. You know, you got to understand there is a huge, uh, difference between how these decisions are made versus how these things are executed and implemented. Right. It's, you know, I always joke about this is that, if you take a look at the latest commercials, you know, that uh, NetSuite puts out, uh, they say that, you know, their big push is that, you, that there are executives that can now run companies on their cell phone, right? And, you know, that image, that image that that executive has of, you know, stepping out of his, uh, you, know, you know, stepping out of his limo and getting some kind of a message on his, you know, iPhone that, oh, my gosh, you know, here's this chart and something's in the red and I touch this and, you know, somewhere off, uh, you know, in China, machines stop and another machine line, you know, starts, you know, starts up to change, produ change production lines and all of a sudden everything is great. You know, that's what they sell, right? The, uh, the actual hamburger, ma hamburger making behind the scenes that all the folks that are responsible for doing these implementations is completely different, Right. And so I think what happens is that uh, there, is a, there is a huge disconnect between always between marketing the latest and greatest and what the actual folks that have to do the work, uh, you know, and the heavy lifting to get the implementation done. 
So the answer to that question is completely, it depends on, you know, if you're shoveling coal into the furnace of the Titanic, or if you're up there, you know, sipping champagne in one of the grand ballrooms, right? <laughs> it's a, it's a, a bit of a perception difference, even if the ship's all headed in the same, exactly same right. to the same place. <laughs> exactly right. Oh uh, man. Uh, great. Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to see where we go next. I think we're going to leave it there for now. Um, you know, to anyone listening, we got a nice response, uh, some some good attention to the to the first episode, kicking things off. Really interested to hear uh, what you think of today's discussion too. You can reach out to, uh, well, to me directly, Jay Gumpert at msdynamicsworld.com, or um, or you know, talk to us on Twitter, for example. Uh, our handle is MS Dynamics World, and and Peter, what's yours? It's it's Turn On Dynamics, right? All one word. Yes, sir. All Turn right, On great. Dynamics, right? or. Yeah, or TOD365.com. By the way, Jason, just wanted to mention is that um, from now on in, uh, we're going to be getting more, you know, more specific and more detailed in a lot of our discussions. And uh, we want, we're going to be bringing in some industry experts, uh, you know, folks that are you know, partners, customers, competitors, but all folks that have a tremendous amount of knowledge in the areas that we're going to be picking up. And so it'll be much more than just a discussion between yourself and me. We're also going to be bringing in some great resources to add their, uh, you know, knowledge to the discussions. Yeah, absolutely. And that really will, as, as great as it is, just, just the two of us, uh, you know, going back and forth here, I think a, a third voice uh, yes. and so, <laughs> might, might add a little, a little something to it. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm truly excited for that and uh yeah we've got we've got cost we've got hybrid we've got project management and maybe even a few other uh, a few other topics to uh, to dive into we do and i'm keeping those secret all right i will be as surprised as our listeners all right very good well Thank we you, will Jason. yeah we will end it there thanks peter